now, from the makers of Cold Water Omo. Well, at least we know why Charles Baines was killed. This tape that I found, it's labeled XR40. Obviously, Baines used this to program George XR. Then you must stay near the patient, Mrs. Peel. If they manage to revive XR40, then you can feed him that tape. And where will you be, Steve? Sir Wilfred Pelly created George. He's on leave at the moment, but I'm going to join him. Bye, Mrs. Peel. The Avengers. John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers. Three of this story, in which John Steed asks the inventor, Sir Wilfred Pelly, who shot poor George Oblique Stroke XR40. John Steed and Emma Peel had to agree that they weren't getting very far, very fast, on the case of George XR40. The supercomputer was still on the danger list in spite of hours of skillful work by Dr. Ardmore, the cybernetic surgeon, and his assistant, Tobin. George XR-40 had undergone a vital emergency operation. At first, the team had high hopes that he'd rally round and make a full recovery. But poor George just wasn't strong enough to come through it intact. His delicate mechanism gave up. There he lay on the operating table, out of action, a feeble glow from his dials, his impulses flat, his current barely flowing. In fact, just about ticking over. <sighs> well, he's just about holding his own. That's all I can say. The next 24 hours will be vital. He's had all the top treatment the computerized science can give him. There's only one real hope. That Steve can persuade his inventor, Sir Wilfred Penny, to return. The only hope, I'm afraid. John Steed had motored down to Sir Wilfred Pelly's country home at top speed. He found it without difficulty, turning into the gravel drive and drawing up in front of the large Georgian entrance. Steed noted, as he climbed out of his Bentley, a gardener with a shotgun tucked under one arm, moving round the corner of the house. He registered the fact, although he didn't recognize the man. Perhaps Mrs. Peel might have done. Steed ran lightly up the stone steps and rang the bell. A few moments later... Yes, sir. John Steed. Did you get my message? The telephone from the Heron establishment. Indeed. Yes, that is, um, Steed. But I regret that your journey has been wasted. I'm afraid Sir Wilfrid has been forced to retire. Forced? You mean he's ill? Uh, perhaps tomorrow. Oh, well, is he? Poor old boy. Well, I must deliver my... Uh, sir, I must ask you... Uh, don't, don't ask me anything. I can never give the right answers. But this way... Uh, sir, please. Oh, thank you. A chap like you are worth your weight in the family silver. Uh, just take my coat, my hat, or my umbrella. What is that? Good chap, thank you. Uh, in here, yeah? Ah. You must be Sir Wilfred. Splendid. <laughs> you know, your butler's quite pre-war. Don't breed them like that anymore. How are you, Sir Wilfred? Steed addressed his remarks to a tall, grey-haired gentleman who was sitting in an old, comfortable leather chair, staring pensively into the open fire. He was thin, but tanned. The type of elderly man one would expect to positively crackle with energy. But he merely looked up nervously at Steed's entrance. Inform Mr. Steed that you were unwell and in the process of retiring, sir. Hmm? 
Oh, yes, I'm afraid that's true. I, I can't see you now. Well, this shouldn't take a minute. It's about yes, George sir. XR 40. If you please, sir. Sir Wilfred has made it quite clear that he doesn't uh, want to... Just a minute, Jason. George XR 40, you say? Oh. Oh, and in that case... Won't uh, take a minute, promise. Well, um, you will perhaps a moment or two. It'll be all right. You do, do sit down. Ah, thank you. Thank you, sir. Wilfred. Would you care for a drink? Uh, scotch with a breath of soda. Quite a drive down here. First to work driving. Now, how is XR 40? Critical. Uh, I'm afraid... Someone took a shot at him, Sir Wilfred. What? George shot? Almost point-blank range. Took it in the middle. Good gracious, in the middle, eh? Vital organs affected. Totally. Gracious. But why? Does anyone know why? Uh, uh, not too well. Sorry, sir. Uh, no, Sir Wilfred, uh, no one knows why. In fact, everyone's quite baffled. That's why we'd like your assistance. Mine? David, how could I help well, you did design XR, so there's no one better qualified to diagnose the damage. Yes, yes, but when... He uh, has been asking for you, sir. Is that so? Is that really so? Your scotch, sir. Ah, thank you, thank you. Well, Charles. I, uh, I think I'll have one, Jason. It's uh, rather later for you, isn't it, sir? A uh, scotch, Jason. Make it a double. At the double. Uh, very good, sir. Ardmore is a good man. Oh, yes, very. But um, he's already had a go. He's not the best. You are. I, I'm i sorry, Mr. Steed. Very sorry, but it's out of the question. Poor old George XR. You know, the only words he managed were help and pelly. That's so. Your double scotch, sir. Oh, thank you, Jason. No, 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 Steed, I, I'm not giving up my holiday, not even for XR. Anyway, there are plenty of good men at the center, equally qualified. There's no necessity for me to return now. I see. No, I don't think you do see. I worked for three years on that project without a break. And before that, five years at Harwell, without so much as a day off. Pressures, indispensability, that's the trouble with the ministry, Steed, they... They, they, they treat one as though, uh, as though one were a, a computer. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I, I understand, Sir Wilfred. But this is an emergency. There are always emergencies, always extreme cases. No, I'm going to finish my holiday, Steve. But surely, Sir Wilfred, I can just... No. Is that your last word? Yes. Well, in that case, I, I won't bother you further. Good day, Sir Wilfred. No, no. I'll, uh, Goodbye, Mr. Steed. I'll see the gentleman out, sir. This way, Mr. Steed. Sir Wilfred made no further comment, but sat dejectedly by the fire, staring into the flames, as though regretting his decision, biting his lip, his thin hands turning the glass of whiskey nervously. He looked up only when Jason came back into the room and walked over to him. Sir Wilfred raised the whiskey to his lips, but before he could drink it... You behave yourself... You old fool. Jason then walked swiftly out of the room and locked Sir Wilfred in. Back at the Heron establishment, Dr. Ardmore had been forced to turn his attention back to poor George. There was no doubt about it. The patient was sinking fast. Shock electrode treatment had been applied, but vital organs needed repair. Yet another attempt was to be made on the operating table. Tweedles. A screwdriver. Oh, not that big nurse. We aren't repairing bicycles. Sorry, Doctor. Soldering iron. Things still in a state of flux. Now, this is the important part. If I can back to him out of the two cracks, he just might have another chance. Uh, swap. Thank you, nurse. By the time Steed returned to the establishment, George XR40 was out of the operating theater and resting quietly. Steed found Mrs. Peel in the waiting room. Uh, um, Mrs. Peel, how is George XR? Hanging on. The last thing at computers was two plus two equals five. Hmm. 
You know, I've always suspected that. It's something to do with his memory circuits. The official bulletin is very, very, very poorly. What about uh, the tape? Well, just look at it. Emma Peel held up the tape. It was punched full of holes. Not the kind of thing one solves over a cup of coffee. It appears to be a problem in tensile calculus. Uh, Dr. Aldmore, do you suppose we could run this through another computer? Ah, no, couldn't handle it. Too complex for anyone but poor George XR. No chance of a lucid moment from him? We'll try again later. But frankly, I'm amazed he's hung on so long. Mm. Shock, multiple lacerations, severe internal injuries... And, of course, almost no electrical circulation. Couldn't a team of mathematicians... Two hundred working for 50 years might make something of that tape. No, George is our only hope. He's capable of carrying out 2,000 separate calculations in one second. Imagine the shot that disabled him. From the moment it was fired, George could compute the range of velocity, mass, kinetic energy, and impact ratio per cubic centimeter. And just one thing he couldn't do. What? Duck. <clears throat> Things may look brighter when Sir Wilfrid arrives. Ah, I'm afraid Sir Wilfrid won't be arriving, Dr. Ardmore. What's that? He's full of the holiday spirit and determined to stay that way. I can't believe it. Well, it's all your own fault, apparently. You overworked him. Years here and at Harwell without a break. Astonishing. George XR at death's door and Sir Wilfrid. Harwell? What did you say, Harwell? Five years without a day off. But Sir Wilfrid never worked at Harwell. Never. Not ever. Really? How strange. I'm sure he said Harwell. Now, why did he say that? Avengers. Brought to you by the makers of Coldwater Omens.